And it should come as no surprise that many pe or some people who worked on dictionaries were either insane or driven to madness by the monumental nature of their task. There is a particularly famous case of a very prolific contributor to the Oxford English Dictionary who, as the editors later found out, was working from and living in an insane asylum. The editors were not aware of that fact for many, many years. Because if you think about it, it is a crazy task to describe all the words and all the meanings of all the words of a single language. Why would you do that? What, what is the urge? What is the need in this particular case? And I'm fascinated by the idea of the dictionary as a manifestation of a compulsive obsessive disorder. Dictionaries are very, very complex objects and there are many things at once. A dictionary is a text, it is a tool, it is a model of language, and it is also a cultural artifact deeply embedded into the social and political and ideological milieu of its time. So that's why we have to be very careful and very meticulous about creating digital editions of historical legacy dictionaries. How do we do that? How do we make sure that we reflect all the complexities of this textual genre? Dictionaries are not very good candidates for mass digitization because dictionaries are very condensed and structured um, pieces of data. That's why when we start to digitize, we usually have to develop a very elaborate conceptual model in order to describe all the bits and pieces that make up a dictionary entry, starting with a headword and grammatical information and information about the meaning or the origin of the word or sources from which it was taken. And all these bits and pieces are at different parts or at different places in a, in a hierarchy of a dictionary entry. In addition to that, dictionary entries are not independently floating in time, but are mutually linked because a dictionary is a prototypical hypertext. So when we digitize a dictionary, we need to think about this complex architecture of lexical relations that exist between cross-references and synonyms and antonyms and hyphenyms and hyphenyms, etc., etc. This is why we, when we try to do dictionaries in a digital form, need to think about the standards of describing data, of metadata, of data modeling, and we need to think about how to make digital editions that will be informative, but that will also be sustainable and that will be easy for people to use and reuse. Because if you think about it, you can, I mean, the editing of a dictionary never ends. There's always new layers of information that you can add on top of the existing data. So that's why we talk about data modeling and data enrichment when it comes to dictionaries. But if there is one issue that I think is a particular challenge for all of us working in this field is to think about the possibility of writing a truly global history of lexicography, that a, a global history that wouldn't be simply a collection of national history. So far, lexicography has been largely a national enterprise because we deal with specific languages, but also because of our cultural traditions and the role that dictionaries have played in nation building and affirming identities. But the true potential of the digital medium lies in the fact that it doesn't provide us access only to these kinds of national traditions, but it enables us to compare and study lexicographic discourse and changes in lexicographic discourse across national boundaries. If this future global comparative history of lexicography is ever going to be written, I am absolutely convinced that the scholarly use of technology will play a major role in it.